Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of A God Shift. I'm your host, Shana Rattler. I'm so glad that you're here today, as always. But before we get started, I would love if you would do me a favor. Wherever you are listening to this episode, I want you to take a screenshot, post the screenshot on your social media, tag us here at A God Shift, and then I just want to hear your biggest aha moment or your biggest takeaway from this episode. And the reason why I do that is that I recognize that there are a lot of believers out there that just don't know how to uphold Christian values, even though they want to do their part. And so the more times that these episodes are shared, the more people that can be empowered and equipped with the tips and the tools and the strategies that we share here. So I appreciate you in advance for being willing to share this with your friends, family, and even your foes. (laughs) I'm going to read my guest bio and we're going to get ready for a great conversation that I have been looking forward to for some time. My guest today uses her God-given talents and abilities to glorify God and uphold the sanctity of life from the womb to the tomb and beyond. She currently serves as a board member and senior advisor to Priests for Life and as chair of the America First Policy Institute Center for the American Dream. She is also a voice for the Silent No More Awareness Campaign, sharing her testimony of two abortions, God's forgiveness and healing. She is the daughter of the late slain civil rights activists, Reverend A.D. King and Mrs. Naomi King, the granddaughter of Reverend M.L. King Sr. and Mrs. Alberta King, and the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. As a Christian evangelist, author of the bestsellers King's Rules and We're Not Colorblind, she is also founder of Speak for Life and currently serves as a Fox News Channel contributor and is the host of Alveda King's House on Fox Nation. I happen to know that she also has a new show with my friend and previous guest, Destiny Yarbo, called The Vision. I am so excited to welcome to the show Dr. Alveda King. Hi, Shana, and it's so wonderful to join you on your show. And uh, it's a, we're looking for aha moments, I think, and I, and I have several, and I know you do too. Oh, and, yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, so it's so good to finally connect with you as well. Absolutely. I'm so happy to have you here. You are a legend in your own right. You are smart, you are experienced, and you are a voice for this nation and for people who want to take a stand for God. And I had the um, the privilege of listening to a keynote that you did several months ago um, at an event that you and I both were at. And you talked about some things that, and at that time, I already knew that you were scheduled to be on the show. And I was like, she has to talk about some of these same concepts when she comes on my show. And so I want you to start off by, you talked about this concept of a three-headed monster. I want you to describe what you mean by that. Shana, several years ago, I was out ministering around the world and across the nation. And I realized my uncle, Martin Luther King Jr., Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., talked about militarism and racism and economic issues being a three-pronged problem. And I did agree with that. However, I considered the world here in the 21st century This is when I began to develop that model extensively. And it comes from the concept of the dragon, the hydra that has several heads. Mm. And I realized the only way you could kill a three-headed monster or a multi-headed monster was to cut off all the heads at the same time and stab it at the center through the heart, through the core. Yeah. And so I examined what three issues would be as an umbrella under that concept. So here we have racism. God gave a command in Genesis and is still allowed today, be fruitful and multiply. And he was speaking to the man, biological male, and the biological female, Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. Mm-hmm. And so they were to have children and in that way racist the racist says okay i'll be fruitful and multiply but it has to look like me smell like me and live on my block yeah in other words skin color has become an idol and we worship our skin color and we say that we're separate races when there is one human race so it is against the heart of god to take that socially in, uh, socially engineered concept of race and make it into separate races when there is Acts 17, 26, one blood, the human race. 
Yeah. So racist says, well, we'll be fruitful and multiply, but it has to deal with my skin color. Yeah. So we knew that that was a problem. Then reproductive genocide. That is abortion or the pills and shots that people take and all of that. So with reproductive genocide, the people say the father, mother of the child, the community, the abortion doctors, and everybody says, well, we'll be fruitful and multiply if we want to. Mm. But if we don't want to, we'll abort the babies, we'll invade their civil rights because they're humans too and there's nobody to speak for them, but we'll, we'll put the woman on a pedestal as a goddess and say she can do what she wants to with her body, forgetting that the baby's not her body. Where's the lawyer for the baby? Right. Woman has a right to choose, but where's the lawyer for the baby? So there's the reproductive genocide. And then sexual perversion. And so that says, well, we'll be fruitful and multiply, but you won't recognize what we birth because it won't be anything like the human family, the healthy human family that God designed, you see. Yeah. And so, and that affects the economy. Racism impacts the economy. Uh, we found out that abortion, for example, aff affected Social Security in America to such an extent that the birth rate was so much lower that there weren't enough people being born and growing up and working to invest in the in the fund. Isn't that something? Wow. So people just don't think about that. It's genocide. So what you do, and I would always say, connect the dots, put it together. You can't just deal with one, but you have the other. And over in sexual perversion, and people really don't understand, and I'm not being mean. Right. But uh, giving little children surgeries or shots, hormone shots and all of that. And you change how they were biologically designed by God and what is cut off or removed. Whether it's genitalia or the breast, the mammary system, it won't grow back if you change your mind. Yeah. So when you put all of that together, it impacts our souls, our spirits, our pocketbooks. So we have to deal with all of those issues collectively, stab it through the heart with truth and offer solutions yeah. that will not kill anybody. So that's the three-headed monster. I love that concept. And you shared a story um, with us while we were there. And I'm curious how much this plays into this three-headed monster, especially as it pertains to abortion and some of the things that people want to be um, mindful of. I'll just say that. They, they, they want to be mindful and they want to be fair and they want to give people the yeah. liberty to kind of make their own decisions. Of you course share you do. Story with us. You do. Your aunt, the late Coretta Scott King, that prior to her passing that she was in favor of abortion and you were yeah. able to change her mind on that prior to her passing and you explained to her that what she was ex what she was demonstrating was what you call misguided Mis compassion talk about misguided that. misplaced compassion and i included that uh with the agenda of human sexuality as well Mm -hmm. uh, the harm that comes to children with those surgeries and uh, things like that. Charles says, well, I was born a girl. I want to be a boy. I was born a boy. I want to be a girl. Uh, the woman, like me, because I had two abortions and a miscarriage, because my body was damaged by the abortions. Yeah. And I was able to actually birth by the grace of God and my repentance and understanding. I was able to birth six living children. But I conceived many more times. And so I know I have at least three children in heaven that I'll meet. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to Aunt Coretta about misplaced, misguided compassion. So we should be compassionate. And so I give us this example. The little girl, as a matter of fact, Planned Parenthood had a commercial. It's out now, maybe. I'm not sure. So there's a little 13-year-old girl that had been raped. And uh, she was so distressed and so distraught, but abortion had been banned in her state. So she had to leave her state and go get an abortion in another state. And everybody says, oh, well, abortion should have been legal. She was raped. This is terrible. I says, well, why don't we make another commercial and give a real story that happens more often than not and that it should? 13-year-old yeah. girl raped. Rape is very terrible. Raped by a relative, that's incest. Or raped by a pimp. 
who's going to drag her back as soon as the abortion is over to the abortion mill. So you yeah. get that picture. And she has to get an abortion. She's taken to another state. And then there's no regulations for the abortion mills. So they're not as clean as they should be, as safe as they should be. They have no procedure to rush you to the hospital if it goes wrong. So the girl gets sepsis from the abortion experience. Wow. And doesn't end up well. In some of the scenarios, she dies or she's hurt or she becomes sterile. I said, so why don't you give the whole picture yeah. of what abortion does and then give that same little girl some help, some support, medical help, emotional help. Maybe the church will embrace her, the child that's born and given up for adoption. Her body is not hurt. She gets healing for her spirit, soul, and body. So rather than saying, I support a life, I'm pro-life, yeah. but for rape, incest, and abortion, we have to still have that. Evil can't drive out evil. That's Only right. love can do that. Martin Luther King Jr. Michael said that. Hate can't drive out hate. Yeah. Only love can do that. You see? So we have to give solutions that are not killing anybody, life-affirming solutions. So rather than embrace some language of the abortion community, we and uh, those who love Jesus must come up with alternatives that will let everybody live. I agree. Do you have any ideas of what some of those alternatives can be? I support so many activities and organizations, yeah. the pregnancy care centers that bring the pregnant woman or child into, the, I say child because girls are 10 years old and be getting pregnant, that's sad. Yeah. yeah. But they're offering help. There are the homes that even will keep the young mothers or the older mothers. I heard of a lady over her 50s the other day, pregnant, wanting an abortion because she didn't know what else to do. So yeah. help yeah. for that mother and that child immediately. And it has to be long-term, not just don't abort your baby. Here's a, a flyer. See you later. No. Correct. Be there so send for her that out to do the same thing again. Again, but you nurture her. Have the fatherhood programs included in that process. And then legislation is important. And legislation that will require that these abortion mills, which abortion is still legal in America, mm -hmm. but they need to be clean. They need to be facilities that will not maim or hurt their clients, because they're not patients. A patient, you're going to try to save all the life that's before you. Right. So legislation, you can protest in front of these abortion mills and teach the people the truth about it. But there always have to be solutions that will help the mother, the child, the family, the dad, the family, and the community. Yeah, because action without resources does not change anything. You know, I think about the prison system. And, you know, mentally ill people just being put in jail. And it's like, listen, if you're not going to give people resources to grow and develop and learn and change, yes. then don't be surprised when behavior doesn't change. Don't be surprised. To grow and glow. Grow and change. glow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about how we can begin to put some of this into action. We'll be right back. God is commissioning women leaders to uphold Christian values and change the course of history for his glory and to mobilize other women to blaze the same trail. Want to know what type of kingdom leader you are and learn specific strategies to impact change based on your type? Find out by going to kingdomtrailblazerquiz.com right now. All right, we're talking to Dr. Alveda King, and we've talked about some of the things that are really um, at odds of our Christian values. And, you know, when I think about the model prayer, Dr. Alveda, that's in the Bible, and it talks about, you know, praying that the Lord's will be done. When I look at what my desire is and your desire and many of the people that believe and think like us, that we really do have a desire for God's will to be done on earth. 
But clearly, when we look at all of the things that are going on around us, many of you have already discussed here in this show, clearly everyone is not really concerned about God's will. And so how can we teach someone, especially those that are, are doing things that are contradiction to the word of God, how can you teach someone to be passionate about the will of God? We can teach first by example, and people should see the kingdom of God in our own living. There's a song, we believe that the kingdom of God is here. In the yeah. model prayer, for thine is the kingdom and the power yeah. and the glory. Jesus Christ, of course, said that he came to advance the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God should be very apparent in our own living. By example, sometimes I have financial challenges or health challenges or family challenges. I happen to have a prayer room at home. And if I seem out of sorts, my adult children who are in and out of the house a lot and the grandchildren during the summer, they'll just point towards my prayer room. If I seem to <laughs> Time to go pray, auntie. Go, go in there, get in there. <laughs> so by example, but we there again, in my own ministry, for example, and a lot of people don't know, I've been a singer-songwriter and an actress and an entertainer. Now I'm a Christian entertainer since 1974 with my first song, Let Freedom Ring. Yeah. And many of my music videos are on YouTube and you can find those and you can find me at alvitaking.com. So in my life, I use all of my resources, gifts and talents to advance the kingdom of God. Yeah. However, we have to live that kingdom. And by example, we watch what we say, we watch what we think, we watch what we do, because we know God is watching us, but others are watching us as well. And to be informed, educated, and activated in our communities where we are planted. Yeah. And as we're doing that, and certainly for Christians going to a Christian church, uh, they have a statement out now, the, the whole man, and that's the Jews, and the Christians and the Jews together. Well, there are Messianic more, uh, Muslims now. I don't know if people know that. We are aware of Messianic Jews, but we're not aware of the Messianic Muslims who still embrace their culture, but they've accepted Christ and they're being persecuted and killed as well in Africa even. Yeah. So we have to live this Christian example, support each other, uplift the name of Jesus, but live it. You know, there's an old saying, I'd rather see a sermon than to hear one any day. That's right. That's and right. so if we live that way with all of our occupations and uh, engagements and different things, and there's something they call the seven mountains. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yes, and the education, media, all of that in governments. And then the eighth mountain, the mountain that's above it, the mountain of God that is found in the book of Hebrew. Yeah. Hebrews. So uh, in Hebrews, the working in those areas where we are planted, whether it's government, health, education, media, I, I can't name all seven of them at the same time. And yeah. there are certainly even others. Business. Business, business, of course. Mm -hmm. So to be involved in our daily lives, in our daily relationships, Repentance, forgiveness is important and believing. I do write songs. My newest song uh, is called In Force. Yeah. And that's also now, many of my songs are music videos and they're on YouTube. I encourage people to go to my YouTube channel, watch and comment and like and tell your friends. Awesome. You know, and what I love about that advice is that it's something that anyone can do because oftentimes people see people like yourself and myself and they're like, but they have television shows and podcasts and speaking and preaching all over the world. But everyone has influence and authority somewhere. Yeah, we do. And the thing that you just described, anyone can do with the influence and authority that God has given them, even if it's only in your home. So I don't want you to hear this and feel like if you don't have national and international platforms mm -hmm. like the two of us, that there's nothing you can do. When she talked about, you know, ways to pray God's will into, into the earth, ways to get involved, you know, ways to live by example, that is something that every single one of you who are listening we to can do. Right, can do, can do. Every generation, every platform, every decade. Absolutely. And, uh, can I remind the, your listeners and viewers though, 
Please yeah. do not fear AI. AI is not necessarily good. It's There's a lot of evil out there. Some people say, I don't even have a, a smartphone. Yeah. I don't do this. I don't do that. I'm not going to let my children use it. Well, one way or the other, they usually figure out how to get to it anyway. And I learned, my granddaughter was five at the time. She's older now. And she went on to TikTok and she was twerking on TikTok. And twerking is only for your honeymoon. One man married to one woman, you can twerk on your honeymoon. But otherwise, don't twerk, okay? <laughs> so anyway, I, they said, you should beat her. You should take her device. At that time, she didn't even have her own device. She was slipping on other people's devices. So I said, what do I do, God? So I immediately told her big sister, get me a TikTok account. So the big sister says, TikTok, what's that? I said, don't lie to me, girl. You know what it is. Give me a TikTok account right now. <laughs> so I went on TikTok. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. Glory, glory, TikTok. So all their little friends, your grandma has gone crazy. She's too old to be on TikTok. I said, you TikTok them back right now. And tell them they're too young to be on TikTok and let's figure this thing out. So don't fear AI. We have dominion. Jesus has given us authority and the keys to his kingdom. And so AI is in that. So I'm not saying be irresponsible and rash with, with the AI Absolutely. because it can be very dangerous. And watch your children. Yeah. But uh, what I do is ask them to lay their devices down and read me a Bible account. Yeah. And then we have a quick Bible lesson right quick. And when we do that, it's better. Yeah. Well, there you heard it, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Alveda King is on TikTok. <laughs> and that's <laughs> why. You are a wealth of information. And obviously, there's so many things that we could discuss. So if people want to follow you and take things further with you, what are your, what's your social media handle? My social media, media handle on Twitter is Alveda C. King. And all of my other handles are simply Alveda King. Perfect. And I'm at alvedaking.com. I'm on YouTube as well. All right, perfect. I am going to make sure that the links to all that is in the show notes because y'all, she has books, she has music, um, she has newsletters. Keep up with where she is going to be. Um, I am so thankful that you were here today to share your nuggets. Everyone share, share, share this episode far and wide. I hope that you will go back and listen to previous and future episodes as well. Everyone have yeah. a great day. Bye-bye. You too.